All right, and welcome to module 12, video three. All right, we left off at wireless LAN threats. So don't forget to take your notes and submit them. And we're all done. All right, so wireless LAN threats includes interception of data. Somebody see they even just eavesdropping on the data, denial of uh, wireless intruders, denial of service attacks, of course, uh, that could be not allowing you to have access to your access point and rogue access point, fake access points, right? Um, somebody can put one up there and lure you into accessing their free Wi Fi or maybe man in the middle type of um, or an evil twin, what we call access points. So we got to make sure that we um, protect ourselves against all of these different types of threats. Good video. Take a look at it in, the, in our chapter, all right? So whenever you get a chance. All right, so to minimize the risk of denial of service attacks due to improperly configured devices and malicious attacks, so this is what I want you to write. So I want you to harden your, um, you are going to, what did I say? Harden all your devices, keep the password secured, Create ba backup and ensure that all configuration changes are incorporated off hours. So please write that last sentence down. Okay. This is to take care of the denial of service attacks on a wireless network. And when we're talking about rogue access point, in other words, fake access points, um, it can act as a man in the middle, capturing all frames. Now, to prevent the installation of rogue access point, I want you to write the following down. What? Write this down. Organizations must configure WLCs, the wireless controllers, with rogue access point policies and use mo monitoring software to actively monitor the radio spectrum of unauthorized APs. All right, just one second. So I think I have some email here. Thank you. Okay, so let's talk about securing. Okay, so there's your man in the middle. We talked about that. Let's talk about securing. So just write this down. I know this is a good video, but write these down. So this way you'll remember what you need to do. These are the three things that you can do to secure your land. SSID cloaking, which means um, you do not broadcast your SSID anyone to see that therefore the users must have their SSID and they're going to be actively looking for um, that's the active mode where the users are actively looking for an access point they are the one who's beaconing their SSID you can use Mac filtering right Mac filtering is to allow certain users um, well let's take one at a time so access point, Mac, uh, I'm sorry, SSID cloaking is when an AP does not broadcast its SSID number or name. Wireless clients must manually configured, must be manually configured with the SSID to connect to the network. Okay, that's number one. Number two, Mac address filtering. You manually permit clients, permit or deny clients wireless access based on their physical Mac address. Uh, hotspots use that. So they get your MAC address and they store it. And when you come connect, because you need, every time you send a frame, you have to have your MAC address on it and they'll check it out that to make sure that you are who you are and you can, um, you can access it. In our ethical hacking course, we'll be able to uh, spoof the MAC address, steal somebody's MAC address who's connected to a hotspot and pretend to be them. We gotta be able to prevent against that too. But that's for the uh, for the ethical hacking course. And then you're talking about authentications. Now, open authentication, open system authentication is what you don't want. That means you're open, anybody can connect, no password is required. That's a no-no. If you ever need to do that, for whatever reason, you are out somewhere lost, and the only thing that is available to you, and you really need to connect, uh, is an open, open Wi-Fi, make sure that you have... A VPN and you can get a free VPNs on your network. Uh, open VPN, just 
Google that, and we'll be able to set that up, by the way, also in that ethic and hacking course. All right. And then the other one is shared key authentication. A password must be shared between the client and the AP before you authenticate, before you are allowed in. But I also on the, if you have a weak password, um, and I will show you that also in the ethical hacking course again, that you'll be able to crack the WE, EP, WPA, and WPA2 um, passwords. But if it's long enough, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. All right. Please take a snippet of this and include it to your notes as well. The authentication method, there are one, two, three, four of them. WEP is you don't want it. Okay, that's easily cracked. Uh, but if you've got nothing else but this, if you have a very old router and all it runs is WEP, better than nothing. Now, it is crackable. It was cracked within a year. Then the W, uh, the IEEE within a year later on came up with something called the TKIP, the Temporal Key Integrity Protocol. Now, the problem with WEP is they always use the same key to encrypt and decrypt data and re-authenticate. Given enough time, you can easily crack the key. So what they did with the TKIP, temporal key, is they created keys just temporarily, just for the time that you were connected. Every time you connect, a random key will be, random keys are generated to encrypt your data. So it made it extremely difficult to crack. And um, that's separate from the authentication key, by the way. And... Um, WPA, the Wi-Fi Protected Access, actually uses the, the TKIP as their encryption method. WPA2, which uses the Advanced Encryption Standard, is extremely strong. It takes trillions of years, trillions with a T, over 17 trillion years to crack a key that's been, that's been done with WPA2. So it's almost impossible. Very, very strong encryption method, the WPA2. That's the preferred and the most widely deployed um, authentication and encryption method on wireless network. And the new WPA3, if, it's, if that's something that your system supports, you definitely want to go for that. That's even an improvement to WPA2. All right, so there are two different types of authentication. You got the personal and the enterprise. Write those down, and I want you to know the difference. The personal, you are going to use a pre-shared key, and you are authenticated at the router yourself. Enterprise, most likely your authentication is not going to be because you're on a big organization. Your authentication is going to go to a server, maybe a Radius server or a TechX Plus server where your username and password are validated and after that you are going to be authorized to have certain access to certain resources that and then you are going to we're going to keep an accounting of what you did and what you accessed when you accessed and when you're logged off it's a triple a server so when you are choosing an enterprise network there's a lot more features that you can do in terms of authentication and encryptions because you have a lot more users going in and out of the network so if you are at home, you choose personal. If you are at work and you're an IT administrator, you are going to choose enterprise. All right, so, uh, so that's that. Let's talk about, that's the authentication. You can use a radius server if you are on an enterprise network. WPA3, please write those down. You have the WPA personal and the WPA3 Enterprise, all right, it, this requires 129, 192-bit cryptographic suite that and eliminates the mixing of security protocols for previous 802.11. All right, then you got open networks, does not use any authentication. If you have anything that doesn't use authentication, however, it's going to use an opportunistic wireless encryption to encrypt all wireless traffic. So even if you have an open networks, um, you are going to use the OWE to encrypt all traffic. And then you, then you got the Internet of Things onboarding that uses device provisioning protocol to quickly onboard IoT devices. All right, so WPA3 is something new. 
Um, not a lot of devices have it, but uh, it's out there. All right, and that's it for chapter 12. All right, next chapter, we are going to do configuration. So get ready to start configuring. Uh, we're going to configure a home network and an enterprise network. So it's all going to be hands-on. All right, I'll see you on the next chapter. In the meantime, write your notes and upload them as homework.